Hey guys, Coach Victor Robledo, and I'm here today to talk to you about another injury to the low back. I have a very good friend and client that I've been working with for a long time that looks like he has a strain to his QL. And so today I wanna to give you simple steps to help you rehabilitate and mobilize that area. Now it can be kind of a tricky area because of the way that muscle works and it's attached. And so a lot of people get confused as what they need to do. They think it's their back, so they start practicing the classic forward fold and they're not getting the relief that they need. So we'll get into that. But before that, if you're new to the channel, my name is Coach Victor Robledo. Um, if you like this information, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to send it out, send, help the algorithm get it out to a lot of people. So let's talk QL. The QL is a specific muscle, short for quadratus lumborum, and it attaches at the low back up near, probably the highest part of the low back, but it does have fibers below, and then spreads out like a fan to your hip bones here. Now, what is the function of that QL? The function of that QL is to laterally flex the spine. So if I go this way, it gets some lateral flexion. If you're doing any counter lateral rotation, sometimes you'll have a tendency to feel in the low back, that's that muscle bracing. Um, but it also is responsible for, for hiking the hip. So if I'm doing this little funky hip move here, that's usually one of the biggest tests that I use to see if that's a low back, um, the QL, is injured is hiking the hip up and down. If you do this motion, there's a good chance you have a little strain in your QL. Now, as to why you pulled the QL, in general, I find that most people that have hurt their QL have an issue with that hip. So if you have your left QL that's bothering you in this sweep of the, of the area that the referred pain is down in the low back, but kind of running out to the side, it's generally because you have a problem with that hip i.e. weakness or tightness. With most of the people that I work with, it tends to be some tightness because I'm generating workouts and mobility plus their athletics. Sometimes the total volume, given the fact that we're not professional athletes, most of the people I work with are everyday people that enjoy their hobbies and want to get out and do them, but they have a life, they have a job. And so when you go sit down at, at your desk, that muscle tightens up. Chicken or an egg argument again. Remember, we're not here to establish why it happened. Um, or why it was caused, we're here to deal with the injury now. And the biggest difference between active people and inactive people is how sometimes we deal with these injuries in the face of adversity. Remember, usually doing nothing is not a good choice. So let's talk about the injuries. Now, hang in there in the video, guys. And if you like this information, remember down below in the comments, I have my free Get Out of Pain course. You can join that and kind of give you a bird's eye view into the theories that I have with my strength and conditioning. I don't like just to hit it with the programming. We have to understand what else could be keeping you injured or giving you recurring injuries. So we always start off with a little myofascial release and I'll show you some other stretches and exercises. Now that you know kind of an idea of what's going on in your low back, let's talk about the MFR that you need to do for that area. So this is a lacrosse ball. If you don't have one of these, you can use a tennis ball, equally effective. Uh, but I like to use a lacrosse ball little more dense, I do plenty of MFR work. And so you wanna work into the low back and get into that active area in the low back. But we also wanna experiment into the hip. And again, if you have a QL injury, there's a good chance you got some issues in the glute. Now I like to take six different trigger points when I see an individual's having a problem with their QL. So they not only work the low back in two or three spots, the low back area, but they also work six trigger points in the glutes. So if we start off bullseye of the glute, that's one. Then we go wider two, then we go widest three. Then we work our way up four, five, six. So it's kind of a circle in there. And that kind of gives us all the tissue of the glutes and helps loosen up that area. Now from that point, we start to work on regaining and stretching the rate, getting some range of motion for the QL because it's really tight. As a matter of fact, I've had injuries where you kind of end up shifted to the side from either taking a throw or being thrown or um, in one case, I remember doing a deadlift, someone came to the door, I turned my head, ah, my QL pulled pretty hard there. So that's a more an acute trauma. So what else can we do? It's a little tricky area to stretch. So a classic forward fold, isn't always going to do it. So we're going to go over my favorite stretch, which would just need a suspension trainer to do, and just a couple basic exercises. Remember, uh, when we have a hip problem and the QL, they're all tied in together, okay? Here we go. All right, the first of the two stretches for an injured QL is to kind of get some isolation in that motion. So yes, you can stretch forward fold, 
classic stretches like that. But I like to use a TRX to kind of work stretching out the lateral side body um, and that usually integrates stretching the QL. So we're gonna hold on to your TRX. You're gonna step back so you load it. And then what you'll notice from here is I'm gonna rotate my hip to the side and take, so in this case, I'm crossing my right foot over left if I wanna stretch my right QL. Now from here, I'm gonna let myself sink and laterally stretch the side body. Right, and I'm kind of coming forward as well. My shoulders are sort of staying square, but my hip is sinking low. So essentially, from the front, if I was doing this, it would be rotating out to the side so that I'm rotating this way to kind of stretch out this part of the back. This is where we want the stretch. Yes, you will feel some oblique involvement as well, but you're also stretched the QL. Now, the second one we're gonna do is sort of a classic uh, pigeon pose or modified pigeon pose, which I call S-stretch. Let's do that next. All right, so now that we've stretched out the QL a little bit, it's important to stretch out the hips. And a classic S stretch is probably the simplest form of this motion. So we're going to start sitting on the, on the floor. We're going to bend one leg at 90 degrees in front and one leg 90 degrees in the back. And then from here, lean forward and stretch out the hip. Again, remember when you have a QL problem, there's a good chance you have a tight hip or a weak hip problem. Obviously, strength and conditioning should be a big part of how you're avoiding these injuries, but again, based on the total volume of exercise and your workouts and your hobbies, it could have overwhelmed the area and got some tightness. Now, if that's tolerable and you wanna take it a step further, starting off sort of in a tabletop position, slide one leg, one knee through, and go into a more classic pigeon pose. Um, optimally, we wanna get this front leg about 90 and we stay square with the hips when we do this one to loosen up the hip more aggressively and then come down on that. You can do both legs as well. You'll find that there's uh, a little bit of asymmetry in the injury side. You, then you, there's your big clue there is that, that that's where that QL got overly involved. I tend to see the QL get overly involved when that hip isn't functioning right. Now, the other thing you can do for strength and conditioning is just a classic bent leg bridge to start igniting that glute and figuring out the symmetry. Yes, squats and lunges, um, deadlifts, those are all something you're gonna integrate back into, but doing a classic bent leg bridge and just seeing where things are is sort of critical. Now to progress it also, you could take some weight and start firing the glutes a little bit. So classic bent leg bridge, legs are bent, legs are at 90, hips up and down. Now you can add a little outside weight here, and then you can also compare and contrast by alternating legs. Keep the hips up high, extend one, extend the other. Now, if you have a QL injury there, you have to add and be safe in the progression there. Make sure you're not feeling too much pain. That's the second step of the bent leg bridge, and you should feel some weakness in that side hip. And that, again, is another clue as to why that QL got involved. Now, for direct, rehabilitation of our QL, we'll move into the hip hike, which is my favorite motion for rehabbing the QL. It ignites the oblique wall a little bit, but it is a little bit tricky to learn. Give yourself a little time with it. Let's do that next. All right, direct rehabilitation for the QL can sometimes be frustrating for people because they think they need to work on back extensions and tons of bent leg bridges. And to some extent, that will start adding blood flow because it ignites that area. But to directly rehabilitate that QL, we want to work hip hikes. Hip hike, hikes can be a little bit tricky. I'm holding on just to my sledgehammer here, what I, which I use to hit um, some tires outside, just to kind of give us a little bit of brace so you can hold on to something. It's great, a wall, a bench, anything. Now from here, I'm rehabbing my right QL. So if you have a left QL, this is not necessarily for that area, obviously. So from here, I'm going to let the distance from the highest part of my hip open up, right? So it's opening up the distance from there to my rib cage. Now from there, I'm gonna lift the knee up slightly as I draw my hip bone up to my rib cage. And this is our hip hike. Good. Now, if you have a severe injury, you guys get with a professional, but if you start to see benefits from all this, you're on the right track and that's probably the area you injured. For reps and schemes, uh, I think the stretches should always be held uh, for greater duration and low intensity that tends to relax muscle tissue. As far as rehab, 
I always recommend 15, 20, even 30 repetitions for these areas because it's rehabilitative in nature. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments below or send me a message if you uh, want to set up a consult. Again, my free uh, Get Out of Pain workshop is down in the comments below. Thanks.